Welcome back to Autodesk Maya. In this tutorial, we're going to explore the power of the channel box. So the channel box is over here on the right here, and it's open right now. But if you don't see it, you can click on this little tab here, which opens it in the far right corner, these little widgets here. Uh, or if it's collapsed, you can simply click on the word channel box, and it will open it up. It also has the layer editor with it, which is all this stuff down below. We're going to tackle this in another tutorial, but I just want to um, explore some of the options of the channel box up here. So what we're going to do immediately is grab this little widget here, and you can drag it downwards to kind of remove it, you know, basically hide it. It's still there. You can see as I drag it back up. But I'm just going to hide that temporarily. And look here, and right now you can see I have... Um, this uh, control selected of this chicken walker I created in Maya here, uh, which has a, uh, it's, it's a titled head control, it's the actual uh, NURBS shape here, which um, has all these attributes attached to it. So each of these attributes are basically um, presets for animation. So I actually rigged this uh, model. So for example, uh, I can adjust the flap. So I can click on the word flap here and then middle click and mouse and drag one way or the other and you can see the flap here is closing and opening just by middle click and dragging. Or I can do a gun rotation which rotates the main gun there by middle click and drag it. Um, I have a gun slider so you can see I have lots of different attributes set up here in the channel box. Now uh, the main thing is the channel box is dependent upon what you have selected. So here I have this larger nerve circle, which is the whole scene here, or I can click on you know, the leg and you'll see the controls here. So channel box is primarily used for animation. You can tell if it's been animated by these uh, sort of pink lines here. You can see here that these have been keyed. And uh, you can see in the timeline here, we have these red lines. And if I move in time and actually scrub, you can see a little bit of animation here. Now, uh, each of these little points here, if I click on one of these, each little slider, you know, I can click on the word and then middle click and drag, or I can type in a value. So this one, I have a value of going from zero to 10. And you can set up different values for these, these attributes here for animation. Uh, the stuff down below here has to do with how uh, the shape node which is how uh, it pretty much works for rendering and in, in uh, Maya right now and so the main two nodes that you will discover when you add a, a, a piece of geometry is of course the transform node and the shape node so in here you'll see I have control nodes and then shape node and that's a little bit different because I already have these um, nerves curve set up for animation so I'm going to open up a new scene uh, just to demonstrate this. It'll be easier. So uh, just pause for a second here. All right, I'm back in my here, and I just uh, open up a new scene. So I'm just going to add a simple form here, this cube here, just to demonstrate some more about the channel box here. Uh, that chicken walker was a little bit, quite a bit of geometry for this machine that I'm on now. So this uh, is just working a little bit better, and it'll be easier to kind of demonstrate. Again, channel box on the right here. I have here the transform, which is the P cube one. These are all the transform attributes, and then the P cube shape one. This has to do with the shape itself and how this is created. Now, currently, these are pretty much how uh, Arnold shader basically renders. And then, if you go down further into the input, the polycube input, this is actually the creation node of how this form is created. And currently all these are set to one, these values here. But you can click on any of these and you can middle click and drag and adjust. So I could, you know, adjust it to 3.7 or I can type in a value like two, for example, and then hit return. Same with the height. I can, you know, middle click and drag interactively. Or again, I can type in a value like three. Um, so all of these, you can pretty much work that way very easily. Uh, just by you know middle click and drag so if I want to add subdivisions again I select the word and then middle mouse down in the scene one way or the other to add divisions so I can add three divisions this way I can add you know um, 
eight divisions that way, and then for the depth, maybe, I don't know, uh, one or two, maybe one division. So now we have a start of maybe something that could be a building, for example. So that's what the creation node is about. It has to do with the geometry. Each primitive form uh, has its own geometry. Now I'm in my custom shelf here. I have some primitives, but if you don't have any custom shelf set up, you go to the create menu up here at the top, go down to polygon primitives, and then here they all are. And each one has its own unique uh, creation. Now I have interactive creation turned off. Otherwise you would do an interactive creation where you, let me turn it on for a sec here. This is how it would work um, if I have it turned on. For example, the torus, you kind of drag it into the scene and you drag each direction to kind of create a, uh, you know, the form itself. And then when you release, it's finally created. I don't particularly like that. So I'm going to go to polygon primitives and turn interactive creation off because I like to adjust it through the inputs. It's just a little bit easier. So uh, we'll do that um, uh, torus again, click on it. And then again, scroll down to the main input here, which is the creation input. And again, each of these, we can middle click and drag. So I can adjust the radius. There's a twist value here, which uh, is very interesting. The subdivision axis, so I can make it into a triangle, in fact, if I wanted to. Um, or I could add a lot of subdivisions and make it really smooth. Same this way, I can. you can see here how you can make something very mechanical looking and very different than normally would be in a regular piece of geometry. You know, this would be very interesting form to start with for something mechanical, like a bolt or some sort of mechanical thing. And um, so as you go through, you have the ability to adjust these. And again, you can type in values, of course, right? So if I scroll up to the transform uh, node, these here, the main one here at the bottom is the on. And this is a um, basically on or off kind of thing. It's like a, it's basically like a, a zero to one ratio. So I can type the word off and it disappears. Or I can, you know, click in here again and type the word on and it appears. But you can also type in a zero value for off or a one value for on. So to, uh, you can also do this through uh, clicking in the outliner on the object and then just make sure you hit shift a, a uh, sorry control H to hide and then make sure the object is selected and you can see here it's turned off and then if I hit shift H it'll bring it back you have to make sure it's selected though if I click out it's not gonna uh, bring it back essentially you have to make sure it is selected the object so uh, what do these transforms do each of these you can middle click and drag and you can see I'm literally transforming in the X axis. So let me type in a zero to bring it back. In the Y I can middle click and drag and basically move it up or down in the Y. Now for some reason it doesn't want to move. I don't know why it was doing that but there it is. See I just moved by dragging the arrow up and down. Or again I can type in a zero value. Uh, same with the Z. You know I can middle click and drag. Each of these values you can do that if you want to rotate you can middle click and drag in the X, the Y, or the Z. Scale you can also do, um, but realize scale is very destructive. It's very much distorting. By default, scale is set to one. So notice I can click on one of these and type in a one value, or I can simply uh, highlight all those, those three and just type in a one and then hit enter and they'll all be set back. So all these transforms, I can zero them out basically by highlighting them all, clicking and dragging downwards, and then just type in a zero, and boom, we're back to the center of the stage here again. Now there's lots of other options in here. Under um, edit, you have things like expressions, which we're going to get into, the set driven key, uh, the connection editor. These all have to do with more of animation that we're going to get into later on. And then here is where you basically can key objects. You can um, basically key things for animation and there's lots of different options in here. But just to demonstrate this real quick, how this would work, I'm at frame one here in my scene and say I want to translate in, I don't know, the X axis here. Um, what I can do is start at zero or I can move into place where I want to start at and then right click and go to 
right click and go to key selected there it is and you'll see it's red and I'll move in time wherever I want here and then move the object wherever I want so I can move it in the x-axis over here and then right click and key selected again and so now we actually have animation in the x value here and so it goes from here to here notice that uh, when you're not on the actual keyframe it's sort of pink when I move to the actual key frame itself it turns red that's very important because maybe you want to change this value and you could change it and then again right click key selected and it would update on there so uh, yeah so you can have fun kind of scrubbing back and forth here adjusting these if you ever want to um, uh, you could mute the selected object which will prevent it from being animated but it, the animation will remain um, you can which will look like this it kind of yells it out and as you can see here as I'm scrubbing forward and back nothing's happening but the keys are there if I want to unmute it I just right click unmute selected if I want to completely break the connection you can go down to break connections and that will actually break it completely so there's no animation and then again I can zero this out and bring it back to the center here so that's sort of an overview of the channel box it's a very powerful sort of device it's primarily used for animation uh, again in the next tutorial we'll get into the bottom half which is the layer inputs here the display layers your animation layers here in Autodesk Maya until next time cheers